Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be discussing getting a career in cybersecurity. Now I already do work in the cybersecurity industry and have done for nearly 10 years, Miss Quids. On the other hand, I work in academia, I went the academic route, got a degree, got a PhD, and now I'm working in computer science in academia, not directly related to cybersecurity but we do teach cybersecurity at our university. We're starting with the educational route here. So there are cyber degrees, though we're looking at an American page here. On the UK side is computer science, being the course with various uh, cybersecurity parts to it. So for some context, this website is from UCAS, which is the UK um, application service for universities and colleges. So you can see that we've got uh, various degrees, not just in cybersecurity, but also generalist degrees in computer science, software engineering, and so on. It is quite common that I think people who want to go the university route will end up doing a computer science degree and then trying to find specific modules within that degree that are relating to security. Because I'm not sure, I don't think there are that many degrees out there that focus solely on security. It's kind of like if you're going this route, then you'll want to know about things surrounding uh, the general area of computer science as well. I think there is a growing trend towards younger people entering university and going this route. What I have seen with uh, looking at various conferences and uh, companies I've applied for for work in the past. But I would generally say that there's, there's more of a push for people going to university generally than maybe wouldn't have done so 10 or so years ago. Like one thing that kind of moving in the, in the strangely in the opposite direction um, is in terms of cost. The cost of doing a degree in the UK at the moment is approximately £9,000 a year or thereabouts, meaning that three years of university tuition will cost you £27,000 at least. That's without taking into account things like maintenance loans in order to actually fund your ability to live while doing your degree. Um, so yeah, and this has risen quite substantially in the past several years, especially when I did my degree, it was £9,000 total. Well, it's quite an expensive route, but I appreciate not everyone may want to go to university. So I'm going to look at some of the other alternatives on the practical side. Although I'm actually going to keep with one more course, because SANS training, SANS are an excellent provider of security courses. Although these courses are about $5,000 each for a about a week's training and doing the exam. Actually, the exam might be a bit extra, but yeah, it's quite a substantial cost, but they are well recognised. Although going the cheaper option, we've got conferences. I just attended B-Sides recently, quite interesting. You can learn a few things from it. Um, also Black Hat. But now more to like self-learning. Even self-learning can be very useful. Looking at software like Kali Linux. I appreciate there's a lot of hacking tools here, but if you actually learn and understand how to use them, not just being a script kitty, that's where an important part of learning is. Don't just blindly follow a script, learn how to use the applications. Even learning the basics behind how computer communication takes place, network packets. Is that part taught at the university? Well, I think it's taught at colleges as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's almost always going to be some kind of networking uh, computer communication module in a general computer science degree. So yeah, learned about things like the different ports and stuff like that. Yeah, list of ports, list of TCP and UDP ports. These definitely come up in interview questions. So learn a few of them, not just like the basics of FTP, SMTP, HTTP, HTTPS. Yeah, be a bit more creative, learn some of the more slightly obscure ones. Time, NTP, 123, that can be quite a well abused port. Same for port 53, DNS. Yeah, just try and learn some of the port numbers. There's another good one to learn. 445, Microsoft SMB. RFC, I think that stands for Request for Comments. Here's a humorous one to know about, IP over avian carriers. 
hey, it can just be an interview thing to know about. You can go, I know about RFC 2549, the ability to send packets over an avian carrier. But this is specifically avian carriers with quality of service oh, as yeah. well. Most important, there's a bit of a step up over the previous 1149. <laughs> you noticed it was printed on April the 1st, so it was an April Fool's gag. But at the same time, it is a real RFC. Yeah, they've done calculations on the maximum transmission unit. 256 milligrams, yeah, instead of 1500 bytes. <laughs> Knowledge about some of the software. Picked up a few that are, uh, well, free to install. Immunet. This is an antivirus, although literally just an antivirus. But it forms basic to some industry applications, well, specifically an application called AMP, which has an excellent sandboxing feature. So yeah, I'll make good use of this in industry. Clam AV, Clam antivirus, that's actually free to install in Linux. But don't just install it, understand how it works. I think it's predominantly hash-based how it works. Snort, intrusion detection system or intrusion prevention system, and free to install. All you get though is the community and older version of rules for free. But even the knowledge of setting this up and a knowledge of how the rules work can be quite important. That's how you would use a, an intrusion prevention system, IPS, or an IDS. See, it sits on the edge of the firewall and protects servers, client systems within a network. The IPS can stop attacks, IDS can just detect them. Splunk is a well-used product within industry. At its basics, it is a log collection and the ability to search through all those log events. But it does have some very fancy features within the searching, and you can also produce like graphs and dashboards. So yeah, it's a very flexible tool. Have you come across that much? No, I haven't. No. Just awareness of it at all or not? Not really, no. no. So maybe it's just better used within industry. Certainly all the jobs I've been to have used Splunk. I've had it come up quite a few times within interviews and on the job spec. So yeah, even if you're just able to install it, get an idea of how it works, be able to do searches, yeah, that can really help. Knowledge of regex, regular expressions. I've just done a quick demonstration here. Finding a website without a subdomain with an optional double barrel top level domain. So that may look like utter gibberish, but yeah, if you can learn regex, that can really go in your favor for getting the job in cybersecurity. Also, it's generally quite useful, just even if you're not in cybersecurity. So learning regex was quite useful for me when I was um, doing some stuff with Perl. Perl's quite nice for working with strings. And yeah, just generally processing files and changing the format, trying to find things in files. Yeah, regular expressions are quite useful. I say they are well used within various different products. Yara, used for identifying malware samples within systems. It uses regular expressions. Even snort rules do. There's an example of a few rules. And that's just basic variables here, your external to your internal, any port, specific content you're looking for. But there's the example there that there is a regular expression within the content. Or Petri, they say there. Even Splunk uses regex as well with interpretation of the data and within searches. SIMS or SIMS, Security Information Event Management. Personally, I don't find this particularly useful, but I've come across many companies that do require knowledge of a particular SIM product. It's not something you're going to easily get without actually purchasing the software. I don't know of any free ones. I don't really find them so useful. I think they're more of a management tool. Because what it does, it just correlates various events and, and tries to determine, say, one particular attack out of several smaller events. That's what it is, basics. They just look pretty and look good for managers, not so good for analysts. I, I'm saying my own personal opinion there. It's worth just having knowledge that these things exist. Cloud security. I'm not sure how much I can really go into here, but... A lot of companies are moving to put in data in the cloud and they are going to need the security components that the, well, we're looking at Amazon and Azure here. They've got security options provided. So again, knowledge of these things, yeah, can be very useful. 
There's also plenty of research being done generally about the cloud and the Internet of Things. It is definitely a growing um, area and just a big area generally that covers a lot of different things. So, yeah, be worth learning about this more generally. Yeah, and that's actually something I didn't put here, was it? The Internet of Things, the Internet of Tat. Because there is a big security risk with all these things. Um, Yeah, I suppose that's actually uh, something that's kind of caught us out, really. Just hopefully we don't have too many of these things in the company. <laughs> the blunders with IoT stuff is certainly worth knowing about. So like the reuse of passwords and just kind of how to uh, protect against these things. Firewall them off. Stop them connecting to the internet. That'll do it. So I hope you found that interesting. Ideas of how you can get into a cybersecurity job. Well, thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later.